Did you guys all attend that rec the keynote this morning? Absolutely. We get extra points for making it to 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. So congratulations. <laughs> I don't know what those points. Like maybe we could give them in at the casino. I don't know. So you are at VHS Retirement Strategies from Multiple Institutions. Um, the way the format's going to go, they're going to present. We're all going to have some for some Q and A at the end. The session is being recorded, so I'm going to do that awkward thing that we've been doing all week, where I'm going to run around the audience with the lavalier. So hold your question until I get the microphone in front of you. But I have the distinct honor of introducing our panelists, and I will do so briefly because they're also wonderful. That if I really gave them their full bio, they wouldn't have time to present. So we'll be brief. Um, it's Daryl Ludi. Did I say? I get so nervous about mispronouncing people's <laughs> names. Victoria Nazaro, Bruce Ritchie, and Hunt Connor. We are. Um, they are presenting together. Uh, Daryl is the assistant director and our host. Daryl is the assistant director of information technology at UNLV, overseeing the instructional technology services group, which is responsible for all things classrooms and computer labs at the university. He's been employed at UNLV since 1988. Hunt has served as the manager of the Skidmore College Media Services for 24 years. He is one of six directors in the Skidmore College IT department, reporting directly to the chief technology officer, and has been an active member of CCUMC since 1993. He has served as chair of interest groups, served on the board, and is a past president. Bruce has been in the media field most of his life, being a media technologist since the 1970s, and has done almost any job you can think of that even loosely falls in a media environment. He is currently the senior media technician specialist um, uh, at Northeastern University, where he designs high-tech classrooms and advises faculty on the best pedagogical uses of media technology and methods. He has been active in CCUMC for 20, almost 20 years, serving many capacities and is currently on the board of directors. Victoria has been at the UNLV library since 1994. She's currently the director of user services and is also the staff point person on the library redesign of its public spaces to better meet the research needs of the students. We are very excited to have them with us and I turn the program over to Daryl. Okay, thank you. Um, so, um, Vicki um, uh, was responsible for uh, the, the, everybody that went to the, on the tour yesterday, um, the graduate students' comments. Uh, Victoria was responsible for, for that part of the project, and so I thank her very much for, for assistance with that. Um, so we're here today to talk about um, VHS retirement, and it's, it's so funny when I talk to anybody about this presentation that I was going to do, they're like, what are you talking about? VHS retirement? Do you guys still have VHS tapes? It, it, it's crazy, because that's what everybody thinks, right? My, I talked to my wife this, this morning, and she told her colleagues at Zappos um, that you know, I was going to do this presentation. They were just like, they were befuddled by the fact that we still you know, had these things in our, in our classrooms. And so it's interesting. Um, we're still you know, we're dealing with this. Um, but the, the purpose of the, the conversation today is just get um, allow us to tell us from these, these, these three institutions on, on how we're planning, hopefully uh, planning on doing this, right? So, oh God, oh, why didn't I test this? <laughs> Hold on a second, let me make this work. Okay, we're back on track. Um, so, um, oh, I can't, I can't walk over here. I gotta walk over here. I gotta stay here. Jesus. Okay. Oh my God, we have a problem. <laughs> hey, Matt, can you get up here and just run the slideshow for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> huh? No, just advance the slides for me. I'll point to you and you advance the slides. Okay. 
<laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just lying. OK, so, um, so VHS is going away, right, I think, right? Um, I mean, you can't buy VHS tapes anymore to, um, to maybe you can, off eBay or something like that, the actual tapes itself. You can still buy VCR uh, DVD players, right? And this is, you know, I, I consider this kind of um, a big deal in that, you know, this is kind of like the first thing that we've standardized in our classrooms, right? How, how many of you have VHS, VCR DVD players in your classrooms? Oh my god, <laughs> right? So it's huge, right? So um, I mean, how many, what have we pulled out of the classrooms that faculty use, right? What, what have we pulled out of a classroom that we had in every classroom? OK, right? So we still have some of those. I'm sure you still have some of those. Really? Wow. So, but. OK, we pulled out an overhead projector, and what did you use with an overhead projector, right? You had a little transparency, right? Well, you can just take that parent transparency and put it on a document camera, right? That's not going to break any copyright either, right? So, so that's not really a big of a deal. Right? Maybe the faculty are pissed off about it, right? You know, because they like their whatever, you know, their bulbs that we got to replace and stuff, right? But, you know, all, all you got to do is teach them how to use the document camera, right? And then they're like, oh my god, this is great. I can put whatever I want on here, right? So. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? So, so what are we going to do about this, right? We're going to pull these things out of the classrooms. Hopefully we're, hopefully we're just not doing it. You know, we've got to tell people about it or plan for it, right? But we're going to pull them out of the classrooms. You know, how are our faculty going to deal with this, right? So, so we need to come up with a strategy, right? Next slide, please. So this, this is kind of a funny, funny story. Um, and, and it doesn't have anything to do with VHS tape, right? So how this all started for us is, we have really old VCR DVD players in our classrooms that five, six years old are Sony. Um, and we had an instructor, music instructor, um, that was using um, the audio, uh, uh, not DVD, the other thing, CDs, right? So he was using those in all classrooms. And he got pissed because he would move from classroom to classroom, and they, they look kind of like that. That's not the exact one, but they look kind of like that, right? And he would have problems because the media wouldn't play or would skip, you know, and he would go back to his office or into, into his house, and he says, it plays perfectly where I am. Why can't you make your stuff work? Well, like, I've got 200 freaking rooms, right? So, um, you know, um, so basically we had a whole bunch of end of year money that was coming up, okay? So they shifted our payroll date. They shifted it from June 30th to July 1st, so we got like $25 million. That's how we deal with the budget crisis at UNLV. <laughs> so, so we had a whole bunch of money, right? And I'm like, OK, guys, right? what did I say? I said, let's find a really good VCR DVD player, and we'll just replace all of them. It's going to cost us like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, right? So that was the plan. It's a kind of crazy plan, right, to spend all that money you know, on a technology that's old and going away, we hope. But anyway, that was the plan. So I, I gave that task to my guys. So I followed up like a month and a half later. Hey, how's it going? You know, have you got some in and stuff like that? And they're like, we can't find any. We can't buy them. You know, I, got, I can buy a couple over here and a couple over there. And I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what are we going to do, right? So luckily, I, I, I went to RC Willys, and they had like 400 of them. So I bought, we bought like 150 of them. So we're, we're OK, right? So we're good. But you know, we, we need to plan for this. And they're going away. So what, what are we going to do? So next slide. Um, talk about the use of VHS in our classrooms, right? So it's in every one of our classrooms. Um, we think our library has some, but we didn't really know for sure. We didn't have much of a relationship, me and Vicky, um, at that point. Um, we're a little, we know each other a little bit better now. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so we thought they had some. Well, we didn't think they got used, right? I mean, you know, who uses VHS tape anyway? Um, uh, we, we think they're in our classroom. We got them there, right? So they probably use them. But I mean, really, who uses VHS tape anymore? So we didn't think it was going to be that big of a deal. But let's let's check it out. Next slide. Um, so we use um, a thing called Extron, right? Extron has this thing called um, Global Viewer. Crestron has this thing called Room View, right? So we can get stats, right? So we can get usage stats on how much VHS is actually used in our classroom. So we ran some reports, right? And you can see. You know, PC, you know, has six, this is the semester's worth of, of use, right? So we got 16,000 hours in our PC, our document camera, 3,000 hours. Um, VCR, oh, 279 hours for the entire semester, right? So we're like, well, we could pull them out. It's not going to hardly impact anybody because they're really not being used, right? I mean, look at that. It's like 1% of the use or something like that, some crazy number. So, um, 
That made us feel a little bit better, right? And I was like, well, let's look at the stat a little bit differently. Next slide. Oh. So, yeah, 2% of usage, but I looked at the stats a little bit differently. So over a two-week period, I looked at all of our classrooms, and lo and behold, a VHS tape was used in fifth, almost 50% of our classrooms. And I was like, oh my, oh my goodness gracious. So if we pull them out, I don't know who's using these things, but if we pull them out, it's going to have a, a serious impact on the faculty in our classrooms. They're not going to be able to do, the, do, their, do, what, do their job anymore, right? So we have to do something about that. So uh, next slide. So um, I like, I, you know, I, I don't know everything. I've got a lot of really smart people working for me. Um, and so, and there's a lot of really smart people in this room, right? Um, so I was like, well, let's, let's find out what other people are doing. So we did a survey. Um, and, um, and we need a plan. And to help us plan, let's get feedback from everybody. So this is a survey that I sent out. Uh, did, everybody, did anybody fill this out in this room? And I promised you to send you a summary, and I haven't done it yet, but I will. <laughs> I, absolutely, I will do it. Uh, next slide, Matt. Um, it, was, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, I had uh, a total of 145, and it's actually the number's probably a lot larger now. I mean, it was amazing, amazing participation in the survey. Um, the average number of general use classrooms that people had were 120, right? So a lot of big universities responded to this. Um, classrooms that have permanent technology installed, 90%, right? So that number is, is a lot larger than what I thought it was. You know, we have gone, over the last couple of years, we went to like 60% to 90%, so we got an influx of money. Um, and, and that's where we are now. I'm right about where everybody else is now, at 90%. Um, the percentage of classrooms that have VHS playback, 92%. Oh my god, that's a, that's a huge number. Um, the percent of us that are currently planning to decommission VHS tapes, 67%. So most of them are, are planning to do that. Um, Mr. Richie over there, he's one, of the, um, <laughs> he's one of the ones that isn't planning on doing that, so we'll get to hear from him just a little bit later. Um, but some of them people aren't planning on doing it. Next slide. Um, so what's in their plans? Um, you know, so I asked people what their plans were. You know, I wasn't expecting them to give me their whole plan, you know, just kind of a summary of it. Um, what's not in their plans? Um, uh, only 6% mentioned talking to the libraries, right? So you need to talk to your librarians. Um, course communication, 27% talked about it. People talked about leaving analog, you know, at the lectern. Um, some of them are already doing their plan, and I'm not sure what communication they've done. They're upgrading the rooms, they're putting in new rooms, you know, and they're not including VHS, and we're doing the same thing. Uh, next slide. Um, why are, for, the, for those that aren't planning on phasing out, why not? Um, a lot of them um, just don't have the resources to do it, or their uh, library has so many VHS tapes, they just don't have the money or the people to be able to do that. Some of them just can't, there's so many materials out there that they can't replace, um, that's why they're not considering phasing out VHS tapes as well. Okay, next slide. Um, so one of the things I promised as part of this presentation was to kind of give the state of, state of the union on how, you know, where can we still get VCR DVDs? And I did this search, it was like two or three weeks ago or so, um, and they're still available all over, all over the place, right? So you can still get them. The, the Toshibas are what we bought at RC Willy, for, and we actually bought it for like 99 bucks. Um, next slide. Um, UNLV strategy. So what, how are, what, are, what are we doing? How are we going to do this? Um, so I've got kind of an interesting story about this. So we've got, we're, we're, my, my boss is boss, Lori Temple, who spoke um, yesterday um, during lunch. Um, she really is trying to get us to work with the campus, right? So she has a number of groups that she works with, governance, right? So she has a number of groups that she works with the campus. And one of the one of the groups she has is a group called the Faculty Technology Advisory Board. Um, and so she kind of chairs that group. And it's a lot of interested faculty that are interested in technology. And so she wants me to work with that group to come up with a plan, basically, for phasing out VHS tapes. And so that's kind of like the first part of the plan. So we're not very far along. Um, I met with the group like two weeks ago. <laughs> it takes a while you know, to kind of get everybody together. Um, but we have to, to plan, and, and we're going to involve the libraries and our faculty technology advisory board on that. Once we come up with a plan, we have to communicate it to everybody. Um, 
and then we have to, to implement the plan that we, that we talked about. Um, the library is currently working right now. They've got a large project to um, digitize or purchase um, replacements for their VHS uh, content. Um, they're going to work with me in creating faculty workshops. So faculty that are currently using VHS tape, they can go to the library, go to a workshop, talk about the content that they, that they currently use. You know, and the library will help them to find alternate media, or they'll purchase, for it, purchase it for them and actually have it in the library. They just will have to check it out. Um, the, um, the, and it's not just in the library, it's also all the faculty. And so when the faculty go to the workshops, they'll work with the library to, to find out that stuff. Um, the library has a facility for faculty to convert um, VHS tape to DVD, as long as there's no copyright infringement. So they will help the faculty do that. Um, and we need to do continued communication. So once this starts, once they start working with the faculty, we need to make sure that we communicate to uh, the colleges and the departments and the faculty and everybody to let them know what our plan is. Um, and we also have to continue monitoring usage. That's probably really important. Um, the story I wanted to tell was about the Faculty Technology Advisory Board. So I, when, I met, when I met with them about three weeks ago, um, we have a faculty mem member, member who is in our hotel college, and she's one of these leading edge, bleeding edge kind of faculty members. So she's on Skype. You know, she did um, you know, Adobe Connect. Um, she did Second Life, you know, that, whatever that was. Um, and um, so she'll, she, <laughs> I could never figure that stuff out. Um, so um, anyway, so she's, I mean, she's always right on the edge of the envelope, right? So you know, I'm, I'm going, I was kind of practicing this presentation for her. So I'm going through this, and I see her eyes getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, um, and she's like, you're really planning on doing this? And I'm like, well, absolutely. You know, we, we're not going to be able to buy these things any, any, any longer. Um, and she was like, I have all these VHS tapes I use in the classroom. And I'm like, right? I mean, so, so she is, you know, I think us as technology people or, or AV or, you know, whatever, we, we do everything, right? Um, we kind of assume that the folks using VHS tape are, you know, the old faculty out there, you know, right, that, that, that haven't moved on to digital, right? This is not the case, at least for this, well, this woman, right? She was there, but she still uses, you know, VHS in her, in her classrooms. Okay, next. Um, our implementation plan, we're way behind schedule, so was it going to be for fall 2013? Um, we're not going to pull anything out of the classrooms. We're basically just going to stop purchasing them. Right? If we have a, a, a new classroom come online, we're not going to purchase it for, purchase it, for it. If, we, if, some, if one of them breaks, we're not going to replace it. Right? So that's basically our, our plan. Um, we're going to monitor usage. We're going to ensure that um, we're going to have checkout available as well. So faculty can come to us and they can check out a VCR if they really need it. And they've got analog at the lectern so they can still use it. Um, and I've asked Matt. Um, here, he's our, he's, our, he's our expert at this. I said, I want, what do I want? I want a VCR button. So when somebody hits that, when somebody hits that button, I want an email from where it was, what, what classroom they were in, and what time it was. So then I can call that faculty member and say, hey, I see that you're using, he's going to get freaked out when I call him. Right? <laughs> so, um, you know, hey, what, what, what were you doing? You know, what, kind of, what kind of content do you have? Let's get you over to the library and, um, and so they can help you out. Right? Okay. Yeah. Um, some things to consider. Um, take your time. Right? You don't have to do this you know, all at once. You know, fall 2013, VCR is not going to be available in your classrooms anymore. We're going to pull them all out in the summer. I mean, that, that, that sounds like a disaster to me, right? So take your time when you're doing this. Um, plan, you know, work with your library staff, work with the provost, work with the faculty. Uh, communicate, you need to understand your usage, right? How can you plan on taking something out of your classrooms if you don't know if it's being used or not, right? What is it going to cost? Do you have an idea on what this is going to cost your institution? You should have an idea. Um, Victoria's going to talk about it. You know, it's, it's cost a lot of money. Become knowledgeable on copyright. Um, I'm not a copyright expert. I spent two hours talking to Pat Ofterhide on the phone. She's very intimidating. <laughs> but she uh, explained a lot to me on, on copyright. Um, have options for converting to DVD. Target new classrooms, you know, upgrades. Make checkout available and keep, keep the analog. Okay, that's it for me. I'll bring yours.
I guess that's me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, while they're working it out, let me just um, give you a few comments by introduction. I'm not a media librarian. <laughs> Foods reference, circulation, media, computer help. Uh, we've been without a media librarian for a year. So I've had to rely a lot on what's going on with our staff to keep on touch. I think is we um, made contact with Daryl because we were trying to buy some replacement um, VCR players for our viewing rooms and we were having trouble. And so I said, well, call OIT and see what's going on with them. And so that's how Daryl and I first started our conversations about what's going on with VHS and what are we going to do in the future. Our staff had already begun to try to replace heavily used VHS tapes with a DVD as they became available or aware of them. But we did not have a big project underway. Uh, we hadn't really, as an organization, started thinking about what this is going to mean. Um, we, st we had sort of started thinking about streaming vid video and how that's going to impact us, but we don't have a media librarian. So we're, we are um, um, going to be posting a job ad, so if any of you are interested in guiding us the next um, couple of years uh, in the, into the future, keep watching the UNLV homepage or you can contact me and be love to talk to you about it. So let me talk to you about what we have done. Um, do we? <laughs> she's got. She, she's got. It. She's got. It. She's got that. <laughs> she's got that. It's awesome. So the first thing we want, I asked the staff to do, was tell me how big our collection was. So we currently have about 7,800 VHS titles. Um, and 3,700 DVD titles. Um, and then I asked the, them for some usage, usage statistics. So I'm not really going to worry too hard right now about things that aren't being used. We can worry about them later. But right now, I asked them to give, us some, give me some usage. So we had 19, almost 2,000 VHS titles that had actually been checked out or put on reserve or circulated in the last three years. Um, and 1,500 of them currently had, had seven or more checkouts in the last three years. So those are the titles that we were focusing on in our project. Um, of those 1,500, 198 of them we already had on DVD, and 88 were already available through streaming video. So that narrowed our, us down to about 1,300. So that's what we're focusing on. Uh, next slide. So this is um, our project. First of all, we had to determine the scope, and that was the statistics we just talked about. Um, and then uh, we gathered that information from um, our catalog. We ran a list of titles that had circulated from January of 2009 to March 31st of 2012. Um, we ranked the list by the number of checkouts, and we used seven. Um, just because it worked out, <laughs> it looked like a, a number we could deal with and it was um, relevant to us. We created a workflow chart and we began to research and see what we could find. The first thing we wanted to know was we have three branch libraries on campus. We also have a law library and we share a catalog with um, other um, higher institutions higher education institutions in this region. So we wanted to see what was available, mainly on campus, because we needed to make it available in our classrooms and in our viewing rooms. So um, the first thing we did was determine that if it was owned by one of our branches, we wouldn't purchase any additional DVD copies, that we could utilize those. But if it was owned by the law library, the question was um, ease of access and um, uh, the number of people that would be going to the law library. And the law library is a separate entity than we are as well. So if it was owned by the law library, we would go ahead and purchase another copy. If it was owned by the branches, we wouldn't. So then we started um, f trying to find out what was available and what wasn't available. So next slide. 
we haven't gotten very far. <laughs> uh, we don't have a staff member that's devoted to that. The, our media um, department also handles our computer help desk. They handle laptop checkout. They handle our media lab for anybody that was um, on the tour of the library yesterday. Um, the new faculty collaboratory is located in our media area, so they're, they're working with them. We're also, uh, our media department is also the contact with our Disability Resources Center on campus. And this is probably not any news to any of you. you probably, your, your media centers are pro probably like that as well. So we do not have a staff person that devotes all of his time to researching what VHS titles are available on DVD. So this is as far as we've gone. At the end of August, we had checked 115 titles. We were able to identify 41 replacements um, at a cost of $5,300. Um, we probably will not convert titles to DVD or streaming videos um, if we can't find commercially available titles until the title is requested um, because we just can't afford to go out and do it all. <laughs> um, uh, at this point, um, we don't have the staff or the expertise to really convert um, our VHSs directly to streaming video, so we're still doing the DVD. Um, so uh, next. So this is what we're looking at in the future. Um, our media department has already started talking to our discipline-related liaison librarians and talking to them about the situation. Um, we see this as an opportunity for our liaison librarians to increase their relationship with our faculty by working with the faculty to possibly identify more current VHS uh, or DVD uh, content than the content they're currently using on VHS. Uh, the um, hospital hospitality librarian that um, Daryl mentioned, I bet she's been using those tapes for 20 years. And there are examples of um, what hotel, what, what um, happens in a hotel or something like that. And that's what we find. The VHS tapes that have been used regularly over the last few years are really very old. And they're usually like um, psychology um, or sociology, social work, something where it's an example <laughs> of, of an um, interview or um, actually work in progress or something like that, and they haven't gone out and looked to see if there's anything more current. So we're looking at this as an opportunity for helping them to not just convert what they have on VHS to DVD, but perhaps to find more current, more relevant uh, resources that might better meet their current pedagogical needs uh, so that they can even, they can do a better job. In, in meeting their curriculum goals. So we're trying to look at this uh, as an opportunity and not just as a challenge. Um, and since outreach is one of our ma major, major activities of our liaison librarians, we're hoping that they will embrace the opportunity as well. Um, and as Daryl said, um, we will be working with them to assist faculty to convert their, their personal copies um, to DVD if they wanna do that. Um, or we will uh, purchase copies of if, they're, if we can find them. Um, let's see. Some of the examples of some of the heaviest users of our library resources include English literature, political science, history, social work, counseling, anthropology, obviously the fine arts, dance art, um, theater arts and film studies, psychology, and some things that um, I miss, didn't necessarily uh, imagine, but like foreign language and um, uh, psychotherapy, anthropology, and stuff like that. So it's almost um, every division except for sciences in our, in our um, campus. Okay, so this is my final slide. So we're involved with Daryl's project um, to communicate on campus and let faculty know that we'll be designing workshops for faculty in conjunction with our liaison librarians and um, probably the staff and the faculty collaboratory. We want to bring them on board too so they can um, work with faculty one-on-one. -on -one. 
Um, we'll continue to support it in our viewing rooms as long as equipment is available, and we, we're stockpiling a few, I have to admit. Um, and um, the like I said, the Library Media Lab is available to assist faculty in the conversion of their, their personal tapes. That's, that's what we're doing. And hopefully, if we can get a new media library in there, we'll do more and better. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to move over. I have a different set of slides, and I'll run my own slides right from here. Be easier. There we are. I can't see with my bifocals. Bifocals are awful. <laughs> okay, I can I can run them right from here. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I might as well. If you don't mind me sitting behind the computer, I can easily do it. Uh, we're at college that decided to actually start pulling VHS and announcing it to the faculty in advance. Uh, to give you a little background, uh, Skidmore is a uh, small residential college. Uh, we have approximately 2,400 students, uh, 248 full-time faculty, 43 departments. Uh, we have approximately 75 primary classrooms all equipped with technology and an additional 30 plus uh, technology enhanced labs and meeting locations. Uh, we're located in Saratoga Springs, New York. Uh, we have uh, the famous Healing Mineral Springs up there and we uh, the, uh, have the oldest continuously operating thoroughbred track for those of you into horses in the country. Uh, we're about 35 miles above Albany, centrally located three hours north of New York City, uh, three hours south of Montreal and about four hours outside of Boston. Um, we realized that the VHS format would soon be orphaned, and so library and IT representatives met together to coordinate for its demise. We basically are separate organizations in the college. Uh, the library reports to the Vice President for Academic Affairs, and IT reports to the uh, Vice President of Finance and Administration. Um, I'm not going to read the list of the people there. You can get that on the notes. Our rationale was to get the faculty to really begin planning to eliminate VHS from their lectures. Um, we really felt we needed to apply pressure uh, to the faculty to encourage a timely transition. Um, this would help eliminate a panic when VHS players actually were not available. And as we're finding, they're getting to be harder and harder to find. Uh, we did a similar thing, actually, with the art historians back when Kodak announced they were doing away with slide projectors. Uh, in that case, we actually had a hard cutoff date, and the library announced they just weren't going to be supplying slides after that date. Obviously, there was a lot of yelling from the art historians, but um, they, they did adapt, and we did get through it. Uh, so on April 2011, we sent an email to the entire campus announcing that at the end of the spring semester of 2012, uh, we would no longer be replacing VHS players in the classrooms. Uh, it also stated that we would leave any old VHS, uh, DVD VHS players in the classrooms as long as they worked. Uh, when they broke, they'd be removed. Um, and also, we would, uh, when we upgraded the rooms, we would be removing the VHS players. We're currently upgrading approximately 12 rooms each year. Uh, so uh, this year was the first year of actually pulling VHS players from those upgraded rooms. Uh, but we, we tried to give them as much uh, warning as possible. In all those rooms, though, we do have composite video inputs so that should they need any kind of composite device, such as a VHS player, they can bring it in. Uh, we maintain a storage pool of the VHS players, and we'll do that as long as they run. Uh, right now, what faculty can do when they're in a classroom that does not have one is they can come in and sign it out for their classes as necessary, but we don't permanently install them again in any more of the classrooms. Uh, again, all the consoles do have the uh, video and audio inputs. Why aren't we moving here? There we go. 
Um, we uh, had open meetings for the faculty. We had a number of them. Uh, as usual, very few faculty came. Uh, <laughs> they always seemed to have an excuse not to. There was definitely pushback <laughs> from the faculty. <laughs> um, some of the uh, faculty used, um, uh, liked to preset their tapes, to have them start at a given place. And they'd use multiple tapes, so they'd preset multiple tapes. And they'd bring them into the classrooms. They'd just simply flip tapes. Um, we suggested that they create digital files of these, but some responded that they really didn't always use the same clips each year and they didn't want to spend time doing it. Um, of course, we did suggest they get student assistants to help, but uh, some still pushed back. Uh, we also found that some VHS tapes had different versions than the program, uh, you know, of the program that was available on DVD. For example, when Blade Runner was first introduced, we had a film course on it, um, that we found that the, uh, the DVD uh, released was a uh, director's cut as opposed to uh, the original VHS version. Uh, in another instance, we, we had a um, uh, religion professor who had an old VHS which showed children uh, in a Christian school singing a song against um, the theory of evolution. And uh, we found that this was actually in the original VHS tape, but in the DVD version, it was removed with no mention of its removal or any reason as to why it was removed. Uh, to ease the financial burden and uh, encourage the conversion process, the library agreed to use their budget to search for and replace any departmental VHS tapes with a DVD or streaming content whenever available. Uh, if a department with their own tapes wished to take advantage of this free purchase, uh, they had to agree to allow the library to maintain the DVDs. Uh, it's, it was interesting that a number of departments really didn't want to relinquish that control. So they were pretty much left on their own to purchase their own tapes. Uh, some departments um, and individuals tried to shop around and get us to make copies, but we have a unified response refusing that. Uh, right now, our library is reviewing its uh, VHS collection and checkout records um, of the various VHS tapes. The idea is to thin the collection uh, of those that have not been used in years, and we're going back probably as far as five or possibly six years because sometimes courses are only given once every four years. So you really have to go back in time a little in order to make sure that the tapes are, are really not being checked out on a regular basis. And sometimes it's even longer than that when you have faculty on sabbatical, but we're, we're concentrating on that length of time. Um, with over 5,000 titles, this is obviously a, a tedious ongoing process. And it was begun about three years ago by our library. Um, they're first replacing, the, obviously, the most requested VHS tapes uh, with digital copies when available. Um, even though we may be removing some of the old VHS tapes without buying digital copies from the collection as we thin it, we're keeping them in archival storage because you never know when people may want them. So we're not throwing them out. We're, we're uh, thinning it in that way. Um, it's, it's ironic that actually this year the library had to purchase VHS tapes in a series because they were not available in DVD, and I don't remember the name of the series, but they were not available in DVD or in streaming, and there was no promise of there ever being streaming or a DVD copy of this series. So even now, we still have to purchase, on occasion, VHS tapes. Um, now, I'm glad Deg's here, because he can correct me if I'm wrong, but according to copyright law, a library can make a digital copy under certain conditions. And it's, uh, it, they're, they're fairly strict. In a situation where a VHS tape is lost or stolen or deteriorating, or the media is in an obsolete format and, not, uh, and is not available in a DVD format in the market for a reasonable price, the library can make a reproduction. Now, for example, three-quarter now is obviously uh, an obsolete format, so you can make copies of that. Really, we, the, the VHS are still available, so you cannot legally use that option right now to make a copy. 
Uh, however, um, if the reproduction, and, and also if the reproduction is in digital format, uh, you cannot remove them from the library according to copyright law if you make a copy. Um, but I would, I would uh, question whether fair use could be used if in such instances where you could use them in the classrooms. And I believe the attorney that was speaking to us earlier uh, alluded to that, if you follow the fair use guidelines correctly. What do we do in situations when uh, there are VHS tapes in the library collection where there are no digital replacements available? Um, we will uh, make a DVD or digital file if the following is true. First, the VHS must be a legally purchased tape owned by the Skidmore College Library. Second, we must have made a reasonable attempt to contact the copyright holder to see if there's any kind of a, obviously if there's any uh, DVDs available and if we get their um, permission to, to do a copy. Third, the VHS tape must be in deteriorating condition. Uh, most of our regularly used tapes are, are showing some signs of dropout or stretching or things like that. So really those that are heavily used are tending to be in deteriorating condition. Uh, we make a single DVD or digital copy of the originally purchased VHS. The digital copies on servers are all authentication protected and only available to the Skidmore community. Uh, we place the VHS in archival storage and only circulate the DVD or digital copy within the library. Uh, we do, however, feel that fair use can allow for use in the classrooms. Um, we in media services will, will transfer, on very rare instances, VHS to DVD or digital files. Uh, however, the VHS must be owned by the person requesting the copy. Uh, we'll always Google, uh, do a Google search to see if there's already a DVD or digital copy available. Uh, the requester must either be the either be the copyright holder or have the written permission of the copyright holder. We do not bypass any copy guard and we only make a single copy. Um, the results to date uh, are pretty much as we expected. With no VHS in many of the classrooms, we obviously uh, have to sign out units for the semester. And obviously there's been some mild, and a little more than mild complaining. Uh, but faculty members now realize that they need to convert DHS, uh, the VHS to video clips, purchase DVDs, or actually search for new digital content uh, for examples for the coming year. Um, this is basically the response we, resired, we desired. We, we, we knew people were not going to pull away from VHS right away, and in some cases they were hard to replace. But we're, we're at least getting people to think about it. Uh, it's, it's a mild two by four over the head, but it seems to help a little bit. Uh, so it is having the, uh, the desired effect. And that's my presentation. I'll turn it over to Bruce. Okay, well, every group needs a contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I'm here to serve the purpose of today. Um, VHS is going away. Everything that's been said is absolutely true. Um, we are doing all of those things. We are offering DVD uh, copying services for appropriate uses. Uh, we are uh, buying DVD copies in the library and replacing them with VHS wherever possible. Um, we're doing all that. The problem is VHS itself. VHS has a convenience factor that a lot of other um, formats don't have. There are still faculty, especially people in uh, history and, and uh, civics types of courses, who like to pull the evening news off of the TV and bring it into class. And a lot of them use VHS. Because if you've ever tried to record anything with a TiVo or a digital recorder and then take it somewhere, you got a problem. So they fall back on old technology. And VHS tapes are still available. I see them hanging on the pegs in my grocery store all the time. Uh, I can't bulk order them, but they're there. Um, the other thing is that a lot of these faculty have personal VHS tapes that they bring in. Now, while we're encouraging them to change them over to DVD while possible, some of them prefer the convenience of the format of VHS in that, as uh, I think Daryl said, people can preload the tapes right where they want them. Uh, we had a uh, geography, uh, geology uh, professor 
who had a series of VHS tapes that they had shot like 10 years ago at some strip mine up in Canada showing the layers of earth and what the different ages were, et cetera, et cetera. They were able to actually put a presentation together on that. We're encouraging them to, um, to change those over to DVD, but he says, you know, somehow it's just not the same. Um, but that's what, we have faculty on our campus, and I see Deborah back there, she knows who I'm talking about, who still use LaserDisc, okay? Why? Well, here's the reason. LaserDisc had one little phenomena that nobody else had, Framestore. And he's got a particular program that has, he's got two or three discs, that basically he can go frame by frame and go through all of these different pieces of, of uh, information. That doesn't work with DVD. It doesn't even work with VHS. So uh, we still have a stack of about, oh, probably that high a stack of old OmniDisc players uh, that we hold in reserve. When one breaks, we throw it away, we put a new one in for this guy. And uh, we keep going on like that. But here's the other contrary in point of view. DVD VHS decks, player decks, are still available. They're still being made. They're cheap, relatively speaking. I think the most we've paid over the last couple of years, $125 a piece. When you put them into, when you, when you build in uh, a unit into a standard lectern, there's no particular reason um, that taking it out is going to add anything to you. People like the fact that they have a place where they can stick a DVD, and then they have a keypad up here that they can do, fast forward, rewind, all that kind of stuff. Do the same exact thing with VHS, just a different button push. And that's the other thing. A lot of faculty do not like, do not like playing DVD on a computer. They prefer to play it on a DVD player. Reason for that is if they're playing it on the computer, they have to bring up the computer program that runs it, and then they have to run it on the screen, and everybody's seeing what the person's doing. If they bring up the DVD by pressing a button that says DVD, now they can run it with a keypad, and they're much more comfortable. We have a little acronym among some of our uh, technologists that uh, we've used over the last few years called KFC. And we're not talking about fried chicken here. Keep faculty calm. <laughs> and basically what that means is anything that you can do that keeps them from, how do I say this, from freaking out when they walk in the classroom. Um, one of the things that would freak a lot of faculty out would it be if they walk in a classroom and see a big empty space where their VHS deck used to be. We will supply them as long as manufacturers are building them. It's, the price point is there. I mean, we're not talking a huge difference. We're only, if let's say we took the VHS DVD combo unit out and put in a DVD, what are we gaining? One RU of rack space. That's not enough for all of the troubles. So our contrary vision is yes, we're gonna do everything possible to allow the faculty to have every opportunity they need to convert things to DVD, to purchase things on DVD, to get what they want. But we'll also always support the DVD for as long as possible. I predict that we'll have functional, DV, uh, functional VHS decks in classrooms for the, at least the next five years, and maybe beyond. Um, because, as I say, they're, they're using them as the DVD as well. And the fact that that's a one device, uh, you know, with two devices in it, uh, medium is very good and very straightforward. And it's also something that, quite honestly, I have a, about, last time I checked, about 15 uh, brand new DVD VCRs in the box, sitting in our storeroom. When one breaks down, out, new one in, in the trash. At 125 bucks, why not? KFC. <laughs> That's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, we, there's a couple more slides up there about copyright, but we pretty much covered copyright here. So I think we, you know, we've got uh, Pat Ofterhigh talked about copyright um, for our, our keynote um, on on Thursday, and 
Um, Hunt covered it pretty well today, so I'm, I'm just going to leave the rest of this session uh, available for, for questions from the panel. We have a few minutes for questions because we have to go eat because we're not eating enough this week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on everybody, because I have a lot of opinion. Could I show of hands how many people in here are librarians responsible for content in their collections? Okay, a very small amount. There's a, there's, I, I appreciate all the information that you've presented. Daryl, I appreciate the systematic approach. There are a couple things in the presentations, though, that I think are slightly incorrect, and I'd like to address some of them. Um, uh, Hunt, thank you very much for your comments on Section 108 and the requirements of making a legitimate copy. There is, however, no requirement in the law that you must contact the copyright owner. There is no, ne there's no need to hunt down the copyright owner. The law grants the right to copy. It does not, however, grant the right to copy a VHS to a DVD if VHS copy is available for purchase. So in those cases where there's content out there, but only in VHS, since VHS is not obsolete, you still cannot duplicate it. There's a couple of things. I would encourage the members of this group who are listening, if they're trying to find distribution for uh, a, a title, to use the video lib discussion list to ask. Many people will know of an obscure location for a legal copy. I have a lot more comments to make, and, but I don't want to hog the microphone. <laughs> so um, I'll let some other people ask questions, and if there's still time, I'll make some more comments. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions, or should I give it back to Doug? <laughs> I just wanted to offer up a selling point to your uh, faculty and instructors that like to preload or pre-roll their tapes. Uh, you can, we, at U of I, we have uh, standalone DVD players uh, controlled by a touch panel. And you can sell them on the random access uh, available on a, on a disc media versus a tape media. Uh, we've included a time search function in the touch panel so you can say, you can plug in the time you wanna go to and the DVD will go to right to that, that time. And that actually could save your faculty some time uh, and might be a good selling point to get them over to disc versus tape. Here I come. My, my question's for Victoria. Um, I think it's terrific to hear about uh, cooperation going on at a couple of places between library and media services. But um, what is, how is the library going to come up with a strategy for what I think to be the gap between faculty-owned VHSs and what is commercially available. I mean, there, it's just not all of it going to be able to be found. So does that mean that the library is going to end up coming up with a strategy around digitizing non-commercially -avail, non available, or how do you see that playing out? I see hiring a media librarian. <laughs> 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 to be perfectly honest with you. No, I think it, um, it, it's obviously uh, um, something that we're going to have to talk about and come to some um, conclusion for our library. We're just starting. Daryl and I just started talking five months ago. Um, and so we're just still identifying our issues and um, where we're gonna be going and where our problems are gonna be, be um, occurring. Um, I think, um, I'm really concerned that we make sure that we take an opportunity, maybe this is um, something that Deg can um, relate to, to, to make sure that we're looking at um, uh, getting more current comment, co uh, content that might be even better than 
some of the old stuff that they're using. So making the connection between the faculty and the, the selectors or our liaison librarians is something that we're gonna um, plan on highlighting as well. I don't know if that answers your question, but. I enjoyed the uh, comments about the faculty member in your hotel uh, hospitality services who still has this large collection of VHS, wants to use them in the classroom. And, you know, this person probably was an early adopter. This person probably used VHS because that was what was available mm -hmm. for their teaching and their learning. And I still at Portland State have several faculty who we're trying to make that conversion. It's just that I don't want to be bold. I don't want to be overly dramatic in pulling VHS out of classrooms. When they die, we'll, we'll let it turn into an opportunity for a digital sunrise solution. We just deployed six of those classrooms, or, or actually 12 of those classrooms this term, and so far we haven't heard anything, but there will be some noise made the first time one of those faculty gets scheduled in one of those classrooms. We might have time for one more. Any more questions? Not so, much a, not so much a question, but uh, uh, just the comment for a lot of things that were written there and you, the people for you to talk to. See if you can nurture and keep in that list your university legal counsel, uh, because it's always good to be able to have them uh, available to at least advise and decide if they can defend. And connected to that, keep watching uh, the Video at Risk uh, project. Uh, that's being run on NYU. You can find it easily by looking there. The report that they've been working on for three years now deals with VH, the VHS question, and that report is suggesting some, how do you word it, strategies for potential aggressive practices that address most of the issues that you're still having questions about in here. And with any luck, that report should be out in November. <laughs> and just start looking at it now. It's really, really intrigue. Oh, and the report is, has been written by a university council team and vetted through the university councils of the, all the people participating in the project and looks very, very uh, uh, resourceful for what you're doing. We are officially out of time, so I want to just remind you all to um, fill out your evaluations. Let's give our panel a round of applause. Um, I will, since we started a little late, if you guys would like to make your exit, that's fine, but Deg will kill me if I don't let him follow up. So uh, thank you all for coming, but we'll sort of continue informally for just a few more minutes. Thank you, Joey. I, I, I would like to make a very strong comment that please do not confuse the age of the content with the value of the content. We referred to one instructor who had hand recorded information totally unreplaceable in the commercial market. Milgram's film of obedience is still the standard classic film on psych psychological experimentation. Now this one happens to be available in other formats including streaming, but by no means should you try to encourage a faculty member to go to something different just because you think the content is old. The faculty members choose the content they use for a reason, and I think we have to be very careful not to force them into something they're not familiar with or don't necessarily want to use over something else they have because of technological issues. I've got Excuse one me. really quick. Can I just say something? It's Vicki over here. I agree totally with you, but I think it's an opportunity <laughs> for our um, liaisons to, to work with the faculty to better understand what they're trying to accomplish in their class. Absolutely. So I totally, I totally agree. agree with what you're I saying. I totally agree. I would say there's a real shortcoming with liaison librarians who also have a media bias <laughs> and, and aren't going to think along this lines. One other correction, um, when you make a DVD copy from another format, you are under law permitted to make three copies, not just one. And I agree that the, 
the, normally they can't leave, the law says they cannot leave the library, but the law also says that section 108 does not trump 107, which is fair use, and if you've bought content for classroom instruction, I would think that a 107 fair use claim could be very strongly made for a DVD copy. Finally, our legal counsel has said, yes, a copy made under section 108 can be streamed, provided that stream is limited to one concurrent user. To the university community. Thank you for bearing with me. <laughs>